Guys, what's going on? I'm here with my overclocking benchmark video. And before I get into the benchmarks, I just wanted to tell you guys a few things, a few things that you should keep in mind throughout this video. I just want to make it very clear. I don't want to seem come off shady or anything. I want you guys to be on the same page as the video goes on. So the first thing is, I did use a cooling pad, as I said I would. I, I've been using this cooling pad for a while. It's really solid. It's the Cooler Master Notepal X2. I will have a link to the, the uh, US Amazon link in the description. I'm not really sure about the other ones, if they're sold outside of the US or where they're sold, so I do apologize for that. But for anybody that's interested, I will have links to what I use in the description. So I use that for a cooling pad. Also, don't expect the same temps as me, because since I'm using a cooling pad, my laptops can be cooler, so my temps are not going to be the same whether it's uh, overclocking or not overclocking. So please don't don't freak out if you don't have the same temperatures. It is likely due to that. Uh, on top of that, as for the overclocking, I just want to say that our numbers might be different. I might be able to overclock higher or lower than you. Maybe the same. I just want to say uh, it's different for everybody in the sense <clears throat> you might be overclocking the same or not, and the frames might be different. There are people that get higher frames than me, there are people that get lower frames than me. It all varies, whether it varies by a little or a lot, there are differences. So please keep this in mind. These are all games that I tested personally on my own time. This is not some nonsense where I went, copied and pasted numbers. Uh, I did put some hard work into to testing this stuff out. And lastly, I was going to do frame by frame gameplay, very much like Digital Foundry, where you'll see the gameplay going on, and you'll see the frame by frame. But I, I thought to myself, you know, the, the video is going to be way, way too long. I didn't want to have like a, I don't know, a 10, 15 minute long video dragged out. So this is going to be a shorter video with, I sat down, I did some graphs. I think it's more to the point, it's clean, it's professional, it gets the point across. And what I can do is if you guys want to see frame by frame stuff, please let me know. And I will gladly do that in future videos, like one at a time, like if you recommend, uh, if you request the game, because that way it'll be easier and it won't be, uh, it won't take up 10 days. So just thought I'd throw that out there, and I wanted to give a big shout out to Absurd Tiger on YouTube. Uh, thank you so much. I will I will be able to do the the Witcher DLC stuff. Uh, it is not in this video. I want to do a separate video for that where it has frame by frame because it's a lot harder to to sit there and benchmark the the Witcher since it doesn't really have a built-in benchmark. Uh, so it's a little more difficult, and I just wanted to get put that out there. Thank you so much. I will be doing stuff on that as well as a few other games like Daisy that was re. re uh, re-requested and Subnautica and a few other games so don't worry I am getting to those there's just a ton of stuff that I'm working on at the moment so yeah without further ado let's get into this stuff so I used MSI Afterburner for my overclocking that I did personally I think it's a great tool I use it in a lot of my videos where I benchmark games you'll see in the top left it's usually it'll show my temps for my CPU my GPU the percentage that's being used uh, the the RAM and the temperature so it's a really solid app you see your FPS and everything yeah, I definitely recommend it even if you don't plan on overclocking it's just great if you want to monitor uh, how your your laptop or your computer you can use it on your desktop too is doing I will have a link in the description below for anybody that's interested in it again highly highly recommend so as for the overclocking I did not mess with the, the voltage I didn't mess with the fan speed uh, the power limit I didn't do anything with the BIOS this is, I just did a very more or less simplistic version of it, and all I tweaked was the core clock and the memory clock, and again, I tweaked it to the way that my laptop was able to handle it. I'm not saying everybody can handle it the same. So the way I went about it personally is I moved it up bit by bit. So I would move up the core clock a little bit um, and see, I would go into game into the game, I'd see, am I getting any stuttering? Am I having any fragments pop up? Is there is there any like weird, weird just any business going on on my screen? And I would kind of monitor it on my on my own with my eyes and see how it's doing, uh, see how it's acting. A good sign that you're going too far is when you see uh, any sort of like fragmenting going on your screen, or if there's like some serious stuttering, then you're starting. You realize that you've probably hit your limit as far as your laptop can go. Personally, I was able to push my core clock all the way up to one plus 135, and my memory clock uh, plus 300. Again, not everybody can do it. I tried pushing the memory clock to 350. Uh, I can't. I was I was starting to see some stuttering and whatnot. It just wasn't working for me. Uh, your temps are going to rise too. So again, that's just be warned. Not everybody can do it. The cooling pad definitely helped in my case. My temps were pretty pretty solid. Uh, so just wanted to throw that out there. Do it little by little. Don't just jump right into it. You don't want to damage anything. Uh, and this way you can see how you'll do. And I'll indicate on the screen exactly where the, the core clock and the memory clock 
uh, where I tweaked it. So with that said, let's get into the benchmarks. Now as you guys saw from those benchmarks, the FPS did go up quite a decent bit in certain games and again I didn't have to mess with the voltage, the BIOS, period, I didn't have to touch that stuff. So it was really minor on, on my part in terms of the work for the overclock and we got a decent boost in certain games. You go from unplayable to playable in other games, you go from uh, close to 60 F, uh, FPS to a 60 FPS stability and it's really nice to have that, that constant uh, frame by frame thing going on for you. You don't want to have those 50 to 60 to 40 to 30. You don't want to deal with that. So I personally noticed from my benchmarking that uh, I had much more stability when I was playing. It felt far more stable. Even if the FPS didn't rise uh, higher by a lot, the FPS itself felt a lot more stable in plays versus when it jumps around. So again, that's for you guys. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please do leave a like. I'm sure you guys have learned something. And if you have, subscribe because uh, there's definitely more knowledge I'd love to fill you guys in on if you don't know about and more tech videos. And check out my channel if you're new to the channel. I do have uh, quite a few reviews, uh, benchmark videos, and just a bunch of gameplay that you guys can check out. So, hope you guys enjoyed and see you guys in the next video.